Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And and the glory forever forever praise the lord praise the lord for he is good for he is good and his mercy endured forever and his mercy endures forever praise the lord god of israel praise the lord god of israel for he is good for he is good and his mercy endured forever and his mercy endures forever these things we pray in Jesus' name. These things we pray in Jesus' name. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. And King of Kings. And King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Today's reading, 1 Chronicles 16, verses 18 through 21. Saying unto thee, Saying unto thee, Will I give the land of Canaan? Will I give the land of Canaan? The lot of your inheritance. The lot of your inheritance. When ye were but few, when ye but few, even a few, even a few, and strangers in it, and strangers in it. And when they went from nation to nation, and when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, Yea. He reproved kings for their sakes. He reproved kings for their sakes. May the Lord give a blessing for the reading, the hearing, and the learning, and understanding of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath today to Oakland class. I know it's been a while since I've been here. I've been rotating back and forth to uh, Vegas. Okay, so this lesson here today, the title is The Virtuous Woman. And I did this lesson in Las Vegas uh, the last time I was there and they took this lesson down and I was furious because someone doesn't want to hear the truth. Okay, the truth, the truth is like, it's like poison to the wicked. Okay, the truth is like poison to the wicked. The title of the lesson is The Virtuous Woman. We're going to read about how God made the woman. This is how the Lord, this is how the Lord created the woman to be. Okay? I'm not speaking in terms of the world. The world is something different. But God said, this is what I created the woman to be, right? Okay, according to the word of God. Okay, let's start the lesson off. In Proverbs 31, the book of Proverbs, chapter 31. Some of the things that we're going to go over in this lesson, I don't know, it could be, some people could, could convey as being offensive. I'm not, it's not my intention to offend anyone. We're just reading the book, okay? Proverbs, chapter 31. I'm not going to tell anyone they have to leave today. I want everyone to stay. <laughs> I don't see anyone new, so no one, no one should leave. <laughs> okay, Proverbs chapter 31. Amen. Okay, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. How many of you, by a show of hands, believe in the Word of God? Believe in this book that we're reading? Okay, so that means, what does that mean? That means that everything we read in it, you agree to it. Okay? Old and New Testament, correct? Yes. We're reading together, correct? Yes. The Bible interprets itself, correct? Yes. Okay, so we just read it. Yes. Proverbs 31. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. The, king, the words of King Lemuel. Stop. So this is a king, right? Is, is any of us in here kings no. and queens? No. This is a king, okay? A king of Israel, I'm assuming, correct? A king, Lemuel, go on. The prophecy that his mother taught him. That his father taught him. His mother. His uncle. His mother. A woman. A prophecy that his mother taught him. Yes. Let's see if this mother is biased uh, 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 against him. Because he's a male, she's a female. Let's see the wisdom that she gives to her son, a woman. Go ahead and read. What, my son, and what, the son of my womb, and what, 
the son of my vow. Let's see what his mother tells him concerning his strength as a man. Go ahead and read. Give not thy strength unto women. Stop. This woman, a woman, tells her son not to give his strength to a woman. Now, ladies, women, it's not meant to, to offend you. We got, we're not finished with it. We just started the lesson. Okay? I don't want to see anybody running out the back door. Okay? It says she's telling her son, don't give your strength. What, what, kind of, what are we talking about strength? His physical strength? No, we're not talking about that. No. It's the order that God laid out in Genesis. He, the man is, is, is first. He created the man first. And then the woman come, is of the man, not the other way around, according to what we just read. That's why I asked the question earlier, how many of you believe in this book? And you, everyone raised their hand. That means everything we read in here, you're saying you believe in it. Remember, we're teaching the word of God, not according to what the world says. You have to get that out of your mind. It's according to what the book says. Okay? The woman is beautiful. OK, that's why she's of the man. She's part of the man. What, my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows give not your strength unto women. Keep reading. Nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. So your ways because you're a king. So for much is given, much is required. You're a king. So you're supposed to stand in a certain light. And you're not supposed to sway from that. Right. Nor thy ways that which destroyeth kings. Keep reading. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Uh-huh. Lest they drink and forget the law. Meaning, it doesn't say it doesn't mean that the, the king can't have can't drink wine. We don't we drink alcohol on the feast days? Yeah. But when you go overboard. You get drunk. That's where you start messing up. It says, it says, when you when you go overboard in drinking, lest they drink and forget the law. How many of you? I mean, come on. Everyone knows when you're not in your right mind, right. when you're drunk, you do foolish things. Yes. And you will forget the law. Yes. It says, lest they drink and forget the law. Go on. And pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Verse six. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. So you have people out here who drink, 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 have always drank, right? And sometimes, unfortunately, to the point where they're almost ready to perish. Mm -hmm. So God is saying, if you're going to give strong drink to anyone, give strong drink unto him or her that is ready to perish. Keep reading. And wine unto those that be of heavy heart. Seven. Let him drink and forget his poverty uh -huh. and remember his misery no more. Verse 8. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such are as are appointed to destruction. Go on. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So stop right there before we go into verse 10. God set the man to be the head. Okay. Now, if anyone has a problem with that, you have a problem with God. And no one, I wouldn't advise anyone in here to try to box with God. God is the one, it happened in the garden, okay? Everything took place in the garden, and this is where we are right now, okay? If you are a female and you are a feminist, you are going after Satan. If you are a female and you are seeking to be equal to a male or to be over him, you're serving Satan. Wow. Out of order. You are out of order. If you are a male and you know that you're the head of the woman and you physically abuse her, talk down to her, mistreat her, you are of Satan. Amen. If you are a female or a male who support LGBTQ, you may not participate in your, in your, with your, yourself, but you are a, what do they call that? A, um, it's, you support it an, an, an uh, ally. Yeah. You're going after Satan. Now, those, those individuals who live that lifestyle, they can repent. Yes. Okay? Yes. 
It would be the same thing if I'm out here sleeping with a hundred different women. Yeah. It's sin. If I'm eating pork, it's sin. If I'm doing Christmas, it's sin. Homosexuality, LGBTQ+, plus, it's sin. There's only one sin you cannot repent from. Blaspheme yeah, of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. And I know people are watching me right now and their ears are ringing because uh, that's the way the world is going towards, but that's not natural. Right. And God did not set, God, the God that we serve doesn't make any mistakes. Right. He called the end from the beginning. Okay, now when we start verse 10, we're going right into the order of how God created the woman. Now, God, remember, we're not robots. God dictates and you do what you want. But there's consequences for it. And we're going to go through all those consequences in this lesson. That's why I had asked earlier, is there any kind of way that we can prevent my, this lesson from being taken down? Because there's going to be a lot of controversial things we're going to go over in this lesson. Verse 10, go ahead and read. Who can find a virtuous woman? That's a question. Who can find a virtuous woman? Based on that question, it seems like there's not many left on the planet Earth. There's got to be some somewhere. Maybe if I go fly to Vietnam in some village somewhere, there's a virtuous woman somewhere. Who can find a virtuous woman is a question. Keep reading. For her price is far above rubies. Far above jewelry and rubies and diamonds and gold. Yes. Keep reading. The heart of her husband doth sat safely trust in her. So her husband doesn't have to worry. He can go out of town yes. and he can go wherever. And he knows that she fears God and, she, and he knows that he won't, she won't step out on him. Amen. That's a virtuous woman. That's one characteristic of a virtuous woman. She's not a whore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the opposite of a whore is a whoremonger. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the woman, it's the man as well. Amen. Because who is the woman whoring with? A whore the heir? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the man. <laughs> the heir. <laughs> who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Go on. So that he shall have no need of spoil. What is that spoil? He should have no need of other women. Because... Mm -hmm. Everything that this man, husband, desires is all in this one woman. I have no need to go off to anyone else. Let's read more characteristics. Keep reading. She would do him good and not evil uh -huh. all the days of her life. Some of the days of his life. All the days of her life. And vice versa. Right. Right. Keep reading. She seeketh wool. Now, this is what some, some people believe that the woman is supposed to stay at home, do, no, do nothing, just take care of the man, and that's it, period. But let's see what the Bible says that she's able to do. This virtuous woman. Read verse a, uh, 13. 13, uh, 13 again. Go ahead and read. She seeketh wool uh -huh. and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. So she knows how to work with her hands. That, what does that mean? Let's bring it to where we are now. She can have a business, a store. Yeah. She knows how to work with her hands. Keep reading. She is like the merchant ship. Uh -huh. She bringeth her food from afar. 15. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maiden. Go on. She considereth the field, and buyeth it. So these are characteristics of a virtuous woman. Okay? Keep reading. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. Go on. She girdeth her loins, which she girded her loins with strength. With strength. Uh -huh. And strengthened her arm. Go on. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her merchandise. That means she has something. Mm -hmm. And if you perceive that your merchandise is good, it's good enough to be what? Sold. Keep reading. Her candle goeth not out by night. Keep reading. She layeth her hands to the spindle. Uh huh. And her hands hold the distaff. 20. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She stretches out her hand to the poor, right? That means she's, she's not selfish. She gives to the poor. Keep reading. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. 21. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. Do you see how she's focused on her household? Yep. Yep. It didn't say she goes out into the streets with her friends. Right. She goes partying and clubbing every Friday. Okay? 
when a woman is virtuous and she's not defiled, that is a blessing to a man. As a man, I can't lay in bed with a woman knowing that she's done X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. It bothers me. That's why the Lord told the children, the daughters of Zion, that there shall be no whore among you. That when you get married, you are a virgin. And if you're not, and they find that you're sleeping around, you will be put to death. We're going to read that. And if we had that in our nation, then we would be the top nation on the face of the earth. One of the things that will make us the top nation. And we are going back to that. God said we are above all people on the planet in righteousness. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Go on. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Keep going. Her clothing is silk and purple. What about her husband when everyone comes out and they talk to her husband? Let's see her husband's reputation. Go on. Her husband is known in the gates. How is he known in the gates? Why is he known in the gates? Because when everybody sees him, they say, you know, that is such and such. You know who his wife is? Her husband is known in the gates. Go on. When he sitteth among the elders of the land. Go on. He maketh, she maketh fine linen. So this virtuous woman is talented. Mm -hmm. She maketh fine linen. That means, think of it in terms of where we are today. She has her own store. And, there, and she's selling clothing. She maketh fine linen. She can do this with her hands. I didn't read anywhere in here where she has to stay, stay home being barefoot and pregnant. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. Go on. And delivereth girdles unto the merchant. 25. Strength and honor are her clothing. Uh-huh. And she shall rejoice in the time to come. Yeah, before you go to 26, this is, this is key. This is critical. Unfortunately, because of our sisters are under the curses, some, some sisters don't believe they're under the curses. God said you're under the curses. He said, I'm going to smite the crown of your, of your head for baldness. God said that. Okay. She go 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Read that again. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Read it again. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Read it one more time. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Not vile, not profanity, not sexual body parts. Sharing your husband and her husband's sexual encounters amongst each other. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Keep reading. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. And she's a kind woman. She's, it's, 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 a, it's a blessing to be around her in her presence. You want to run home from work to be with her. You can't wait. You're looking at the clock. Is it 4.30 yet? <laughs> Rather than you want, instead of going that, running to her, you don't want to run away from her and go to the bar and stay there all night. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. 27. She looketh well to the ways of her household. You see, she's still focused on her household. That's the order. Keep reading. And eateth not the bread of idleness. Oh, she's not idle either. What does they say? This is not in the Bible. This is a cliche we've learned. Uh, idle mind is the devil playground. Yep, yep, yep. And the woman's the weaker vessel. So Satan's really going to come on you. She does. She's not idle because she's she's tending to her family. She works with her hands. She's staying busy. She fears God, too. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Too many women are idle, too idle. And a lot of women you, you associate with the wrong, other, wrong kind of women. <laughs> women that constantly run their mouth, talk about nothing. They have diarrhea of the mouth. Keep reading. Her children arise up. 
and call her blessed. Stop. But her children rise up and beat her up. Her children rise up and stab her because she's taken away the, the, the PlayStation. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Keep reading. Her husband also, and he praises her. Isn't that a beautiful woman? Mm. Every man should inspire, if you're not married, for this kind of woman. Because this is the kind of woman that you can stay with for the rest of your life till death do you part. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have no need for any, any other spoil. Mm. You don't have need for nothing else. Mm. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Many daughters have done virtuously. So you have other women that have done virtuously, and that's beautiful too. Sometimes we won't, we won't get access to the top notch. Because that's what the Bible says at verse 29. Many daughters have done virtuously. Keep reading. But thou excellest them all. Who's thou? It's that one virtuous woman. She excellest them all. We're going to read examples about virtuous women in the Bible. Characteristics of that virtuous woman when we read it, right? It says, but thou excellest them all. But what is most important to God? Verse 30. Favor is deceitful uh -huh. and beauty is vain. So we all age, right? No one stays the same physically forever. So it has to be more than just what the woman looks like. But what? But a woman that feareth the Lord. That feareth who? The Lord. Feareth the Lord. Go on. She shall be praised. Keep 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands uh -huh. and let her own works praise her in the gate. So that is your blueprint. That's one of the blueprints for a virtuous woman. So sisters, ascribe to this. You can still be a virtuous woman. When you go into the water, you get baptized, you come out as a new creature, correct? Yes, you can be a virtuous woman. That's true. Okay? This is not meant to hurt or insult anyone. But this is meant to make you better. Okay? But the world is telling you something different. The world is telling the woman, show your behind and your breast on TV and on YouTube. Yeah, it does. And what yeah, is this does. other thing that they call where they do these videos? Uh, I forget the name of it. And they make money on it. Uh, OnlyFans. Only what is that? It's prostitution. It's prostitution. What's it called? You are defiled. Only fans. You know, some of you, yeah, like the sister here, she doesn't even know what that is. And that's a good thing. I'm glad you didn't know. I mean, it's something you don't want to know. I seen a picture of my, my mother years ago, black and white photo of my mother. It's, it's in the house, right? And, it, and it's a picture of her. And I remember she had long hair, you know, and, and she was, you know, she, she, but you can, when you look at the picture of my mother back then, you can look at the picture and you, you see the quality of women from then to a lot of women today. Mm -hmm. I didn't say every woman. Right. You could just see, when you look at the picture, you look at my mother and you go, that's a virtuous woman. Right. You could just see it. And she had 12 kids. <laughs> you see? But she wasn't, ex nothing was exposed. Right. Nothing was hanging out. Right. Modest, right? right? Now, sisters, hone in on this because we're going to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And this is not to offend anyone, but this is the word of God, and this is supposed to make you better. Because if you, if you, you remember, we're the top nation on the earth, so amongst the females on the planet, sisters, you'll be the top of the women. Deuteronomy 28. And because of the curses, we're at the bottom. In every category, Deuteronomy 28, one verse. Deuteronomy 28 and one verse 56. This is a curse that God put on us for disobedience. This is a curse. This is not a good thing. A curse is not a good thing. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 56. This is pertaining to the woman. This is also, the man is still under the curse as well. But because the title of the lesson is The Virtuous Woman, we're dealing more with the woman today. Go ahead and read. 56. The tender and delicate woman among Stop. you. Stop. God said, when I create this woman, 
I'm creating this woman to be tender and delicate and soft, like a woman is supposed to be. Tender, delicate, and soft. That doesn't mean you're weak. That means you're strong. You see how the world flipped everything upside down? Yeah. What do they call these women? A, 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 a bad, but with a boss chick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is all that? Right. You're not going to be a boss nothing when those skies roll back. Because <laughs> the Lord is going to introduce you to something. I'm going to give you the acronym. R-O-I. Rod of iron. The tender and delicate woman among you which you're supposed to be, sisters. Keep reading. Which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness. She and refused to set her foot on the ground for tenderness and delicateness. You refuse, not everyone. The majority, yes. You refuse to do it because you have advantage in this world because you will be, you will be elevated at a job and you'll make more money than the man. There's an LGBT, what is it, LGBTQ push for the woman to be e at least, e e not, not even equal now, but above the man. Mm -hmm. That's after the order of Satan. And so in, in some women's mind, they feel, well, I don't need him. I'm making more money than him. I can be a bad boss chick, and the Lord is looking right at you. The Lord said, you're still the weaker vessel, even if you make more money than him. Because if them Russian and Chinese troops come through here, who are you going to run to? You're not going to fight off a Russian troop or Chinese, these, these, uh, arm, their army. You're going to run to the man. And we're going to have to get it in. Where it says, the tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, what shall her eye be? Her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her Stop. bosom. Her eye shall be what? Evil. So that means you'll hate your husband. Evil. It's a curse that God placed on us for disobedience. We didn't want to be the top nation on the face of the earth and run it all. So he said, I'm going to put you on the bottom then and see how you fare with that. Keep reading. And toward her son. Be, you'll hate your son. Now, does this mean 100%? No. But in general, yeah. Go on. And toward her daughter. So you'll hate your husband, you hate your son, and you hate your daughter. Did we finish? Yes. That's a curse. Let's go read the order in the beginning that God set out. Not Brother Albert set out. God set out. You want to fight, you want to fight against God? Go right ahead. You want to bed hop? Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. You want to sleep with multiple men? Go right ahead. And watch the consequences for that. Yeah. You start acquiring evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Psychologically crazy. Yeah. May contract an STD. Mm. Genesis chapter 3. This is what God said. This is after God passed sentence on Adam and Eve. Because they were disobedient and listened to Satan. Who did Satan go to? The woman. He went to Eve. He didn't go to Adam. And, and, and also, um, contrary to popular opinion, there's no such thing of a Lilith. Right. There's no such thing of a Lilith in another creation. It was Adam and Eve. And from those two came the entire world. No Satan in Lilith. That's a doctrine of Satan. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, one verse. This is what God said toward the woman. Keep, go ahead and read. Unto the woman he said, uh -huh. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Does that still happen today? So why is it that we can say yes to that part of the verse, but, we, but some women don't want to deal with that next part of the verse? Read the top again. Unto the woman he said. Who's speaking? <laughs> Jesus or Yahweh, Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Jehovah is speaking. He is the dictator. That's true. And he can put you to sleep at will. 
Go on. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow uh -huh. and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Go on. And thy desire shall be to thy Stop. husband. Your desire shall be towards another woman. That means, let, let's break it down. You know what that means? That means that God put it in the woman to desire a man. And you can't get out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, you can fight it. He doesn't want, he's not going to make you do anything. Right. But if you don't adhere to that, you're going to cause yourself to go crazy, torment for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. he's, God put it in the woman to be with one man her entire life, mm -hmm. which is your husband. Your desire shall be toward your husband and what? And he shall rule over thee. No, you shall be equal. He shall rule over thee. The man shall rule over the woman. Now, the God that we believe in that gave this dictate, is this a God that makes mistakes? Nope. Did he call the end from the beginning? Because yep. in the book of Psalms, he says he, he knows all the stars that he created and he calls them all by their name. I will greatly multiply your sorrow conception. Sorrow, you shall bring forth children. And the Lord says to the woman, I'm going to put a desire in you. Your desire shall be to your husband. It didn't say your boyfriend. It didn't say 50 men. No. To your husband. Mm -hmm. And he shall rule over you. Now, if you don't like that, I don't care. But guess what? You have a lot of women, they have no problem with that. It's just you have a lot of knucklehead men mm -hmm. that you don't want to put yourself under. So it has to work in hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. So what would my advice to the woman be? Fall back and wait on the Lord. True. Fall back and wait on the Lord. D discipline yourself. There's no law in the Bible that says you have to be married, right? right. But God said, I'm going to put the desire for you and, the, to, to, and your husband shall rule over you. That's what God said. Mm -hmm. But the man is supposed to rule righteously. Yep. Where are we going? That Go was ahead, the Old please. Testament. But some people say, well, we don't, we don't deal with the Old Testament anymore. Okay, let's go to the New Testament. Go to 1 Corinthians 11. The order. 1 Corinthians 11. Any woman that does not want to adhere to God's order, then you subject yourself, for the most part, to a man who's going to cheat on you, lie to you. He may even be on the down low. And if you go outside of God's protection... Satan is right there waiting on you. Keep your legs closed, woman. The younger females, if you are a virgin, you stay a virgin. Because if you don't, if we were in the Old Testament times and it proved that you did go out and whore yourself, you will be burnt with fire if, you, if your father was a priest. And we're going to read it. Now, we still believe in the Bible? Okay, all good. I didn't see, I didn't hear everyone respond. Yeah. We still, okay, all right. That's why I asked in the beginning. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the order that Christ dictated. You know the one that drowned the whole world? The one that is righteous and he's merciful and he's ever loving and kind and he's a serial killer. Not the other Jesus. I'm talking about the line of the tribe of Judah. Right? Our bloodline. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Verse 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, uh -huh. and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. This is an ordinance. It does not change. Why do human beings have a problem with this, but the animals don't? Animals understand their ordinance. The sun understands its ordinance. The moon understands its ordinance. Why do we have a problem? 
And we were given dominion over God's creation. Keep reading. But I would have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. Stop. How many of you agree with that? The head of every man is Christ. Yep. Okay, so we agree with that. Keep reading. And the head of the woman is the man. How many of you agree with that? The head of the woman is the man. Keep reading. And the head of Christ is God. Okay, keep reading. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. That's why when we open up the lesson, what do I say? The brothers, uncover your heads. Keep reading. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. So w when the sisters have that head covering, it, it's more than a physical thing. Okay? Who was Eve's covering? Who, who was Eve? Who should have covered Eve in the garden? Adam. Adam. The man is your covering, your husband. Not your boyfriend. Not the 50 other dudes that you, you're saying, well, I, that's, my, that's my good friend. I used to date him 10 years ago. Uh-uh. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, the sign of her head. Okay, go on. For, for that. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. So I'm going to bring a razor in here next time. And I'm going to give a sister, say you have a sister in here who says, I don't want to uncover my head. Let me cut off your hair. <laughs> you let me cut off all your hair and, and, and shave you bald? I, no, I, you don't. Then cover your head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she was bald. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. Just like I just said. If you don't want to cover your head, let me cut your hair off. And that's going to go from coast to coast when Christ comes back. It's not just for Israelite women. It's every woman of every nationality and every language on the planet Earth. When those skies roll back. Everybody's going back in order. And a brother's going to run it. You got people in the world, some Gentiles, they have a problem with that. Brothers running it from coast to coast. And if there was Gentiles in here, a thousand, I'd say the same thing. For if the woman be not covered, let her be shorn. But if it be a shame... If it be shame for a woman to be short, if it's a shame to you to be bald or shaven, then cover your head. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, uh -huh. for as much as he is the image and glory of God. The Bible just says that the man is the image and glory of God. That's what the Bible, did we just read that? Yeah. Yeah. Or did I make that up? I love women. God's, one of God's greatest creations, a woman. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah, that's true. When that woman is in order, that's, then she's strong. Absolutely. When you're out there whoring yourself and you're dressing provocatively, yeah, you're true. weak. True. 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 Keep reading. But the woman is the glory of the man. The woman is the glory of the man. Keep reading. For the man is not of the woman. We are not of the woman, but what? The woman of the man. Some people say, well, the woman gave birth to humanity. I agree. But where did the woman come from? From the man. That's the order. Was Brother Albert back in Genesis to dictate any of that? Nope. But God knew on this day that I would speak on it. You can imagine that kind of God. Buddha can't do that. Allah can't do that. For you Muslim brothers, wherever you are, that is not your religion. That is not your heritage. You are not ruling the planet under Islam. You want to stay Muslim? Let's see when Christ rolled them skies back how that's going to go. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Go on. Neither was the man created for the woman. God said... He did not create the man for the woman. He said, I went, he says, it is not good for man that man be alone, right? I'm going to create a what? A help me. And you do not abuse your help me. You love your help me. That strength 
That's power. That's order. Love your help me. That woman should be, should be your best friend. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Keep reading. For this cause ought the woman have to have power on her head because of the angel. Go on. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. So we're, st we're not without the woman. We still need the woman as well. Go on. Neither the woman without the man uh -huh. in the Lord. In the Lord. Go on. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. Go on. But all things of God. All things of who? All things of God. Keep reading. Judge in yourselves. It is comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Uh-huh. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Read that again. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. So a woman's hair is her glory. But under the curses, God smited the scab of the head of the daughters of Zion and took that hair away because of, of haughtiness. And he said, I'm going to cause you to stink, too. We know what we're talking about when I say that. If you, you can ask me a Q&A if you don't. He said, that's a curse. I'm going to cause you to do, have that come upon you because you won't listen. Did we finish that? For her hair is given her for a covering. You notice when a woman has long hair, she can cover herself. Take that, all that hair and just do like that. That's a beautiful thing. We finish? That's it. Go to 1 Timothy 2. All of this is order, God's order. I can't, can I give birth to a, to a baby? No. What if I go into a lab somewhere and try to do it? No. <laughs> Still, Still can't do it. Still can't do it. And I don't want to do it because I know that's not my order. Yeah. It's not my order. God didn't create. I'm a heterosexual male. Yes. Right. Yes. I love women, but I have to, even that has to be in order. I can't be fornicating out here. I can't be committing adultery. So there's still laws even with that. But I'm, I, I, I'm a heterosexual male. I have desire towards women. Where are we? First Timothy? First Timothy 2. First, chap, first Timothy chapter 2, pick it up at verse 8. Before we read this, sisters, females, don't take offense to this. This is the word of God. This is God's order. And when you do well and follow that order, then the Lord will, will be on your side. He'll fight for you. He'll find, you will find favor with him. Where are we? Verse 8. Go ahead and read. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel. That means you don't, if you're voluptuous, you don't have to show all of that to the world. Right. You cover it up. You wear a dress. Nice dress. Dress is beautiful. Is. Be creative. What does the virtuous woman say? She knows how to work with her hands. Mm -hmm. Head wrap. Beautiful. You don't want to show the world all of that. That's not for them to see. That's for your husband. Only right. your one husband. And if he dies, so saith the law, you're free to marry again. True. Hopefully it's a righteous man. It said, read that again. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Go on. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Uh -huh. Not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Ten. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Eleven. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. This is what the Bible says. Let the woman learn in silence. I didn't write that. There's a reason why. It all goes back to the garden and its order. Because somebody has to be the head. You can't have two heads. There's going to be conflict. You can't tell me what to do. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But let's see what the world is doing today in these Sunday churches. Verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Stop. God said a woman is not supposed to be up here teaching. The kind, oh, you can teach other people, you know what I mean, the kids, and you can teach other women. 
You can show people things, but up here in front of the congregation teaching, God said, no, no way. Right. But what do we see in the Sunday churches? The prophetess, the Jezebel spirit. So when you have women doing that, that in, because women are, we're different than women, right? Man and woman are different. Women have a tendency to be more emotional. And that's how they make decisions, right? So then you have women who are teaching. That doesn't even, that doesn't like, I said this once. You may, and I'm not going to say names, of course, but you might have, you, I've heard over the years, some sisters wanted to come up, why can't we teach? I said, I was talking to someone, I said, okay, you know what, go up there and do it. Let's see. Let's see if you have the voice command. Raise your voice. Right. You can't do that. It's not going to come off right. Do I appear to be nervous up here? Some people will be jittery. You have people staring at you. Right? I'm not saying a woman can't present. There, there are many women that are great presenters. But God said the word of God, you cannot be teaching up in a, in a congregation. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor, nor to what? Usurp authority over the man. Usurp authority over the man. That doesn't just talk about in the church. Look out into the world. You have women at jobs, supervisors, managers, directors, telling the man what to do. That is out of order. And when I see that at the job, it just vexes me. But a lot of the women I work with, they're cool. I get along with them. It's not an issue. Sometimes I can talk to them and conversate better with them with, with, with guys. But when a woman is ruling over them, that's a problem. It, it, create, it fosters confusion. And guess who's in the midst? Satan. We won't go too deep into that. Keep reading. But to be in silence. To be in silence. Go on. For Adam was first formed. Who was then, first formed? Adam. Go on. Then Eve. Then Eve. Go on. And Adam was not deceived, uh -huh. but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Do we still believe in the Bible? Everybody, show of hands. Yeah. Everybody still believe in the Bible? Nobody's run out yet? We're good? Okay, we're good. Keep reading. <laughs> I don't know. Fifteen. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. But some women say, I don't want to have any kids. But God created you to have kids. He said, be fruitful and multiply. You can only do that with a male and female. You can't do that with a female and an animal. You can't do that with two women. It's an abomination. You can't do that with two men. It's an abomination. You can't do that with yourself. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Keep reading. If they continue in faith uh -huh. and charity and holiness with sobriety. Let's go right into 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 3. We go right into it. 1 Timothy 3. This is a, go ahead. Go ahead and read. 1 and 2. This is a true saying. Uh -huh. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth the good work. Verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Ten wives. One wife. Twenty wives. One. Side check. One wife. One wife. Go on. Vigil vigilant. Uh-huh. Sober. Sober. And good behavior. Uh-huh. Given to hospitality. Uh-huh. Apt to teach. This is the characteristics of a bishop, right? Skip down to verse 11. Even so must their wives be grave. Uh-huh. Not slanderers. Sober. Faithful in all things. Faithful in all things. We finish that? Amen. Let's go to Titus 2. Oh, is, where's, is Titus after Timothy? I always have a problem with Titus. <laughs> there it is right here. I found it. Titus 2. Titus chapter 2. Pick it up at verse... Okay, I'll wait because Titus is a little book. Titus chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. What kind of doctrine? Sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Skip down to verse 3. The aged women likewise. Stop. The aged women. God has order for everyone. The aged women. Go on. That they be in behavior as becometh 
holiness. Becometh holiness. Go on. Not false accusers. Uh huh. Not given to much wine. Uh huh. Teachers of good things. Keep reading. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Stop. So the the aged women, your one of your jobs is to teach the younger women to be sober. Did we just read that? Yes. How can you teach them to be sober when you're crazy and out of your mind? Because they look up to you and then they're going to eventually be crazy. What are you teaching them? Keep reading. To love their husbands. To love who? To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Go on. To love their children. To love their children. Go on. To be discreet. Discreet. Meaning you don't have to tell everybody everything all the time. You may have information. Keep it to yourself. No, everyone doesn't need to know everything that you think. A lot of times that's what causes contention and gossip. Keep reading. Chaste. Chaste. Keepers at home. Keepers at home. Go on. Good. Good. Obedient to their own husband. Go on. That the word of God may be not blasphemed. Be not blasphemed. We finish? Amen. Go to 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. This is all New Testament. First Peter three. First Peter chapter three. Pick it up at verse one. Go ahead and read. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. God said to the woman to be in subjection to your own husband. It didn't say be in subjection to another woman. And you have now two women raising kids. That fosters confusion, and Satan is in the midst. I don't care how good it looks and people, everybody is, is, well, you know, you can love whoever you want and, you know, and, 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 you know, it's free love. God never said that. Likewise, ye wise, be in subjection to your own husbands. Go on. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wise. Keep reading. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Fear. There's that word fear again. Fear God, keep the commandments. You're always fearing. Fearing. Fear. It's, it's always, it checks your consciousness. No, I better not do that. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't go over there. Fear. Keep reading. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing the gold and of putting on of apparel. So that's what the world is telling Women, that's what you need to do to be, to be uh, looked, up, looked upon and praised. Like you have these people like the Cardi B's and all these other, Nicki Minaj and the, uh, Megan, this, what is that, this, this, all that? They're, they're sending the message. You want a man, you want people to give you attention, you want people to notice you, wear this. Look like this. Talk like this. Do this video. Do this, uh, what do you call that online thing? Only fans. Do all of that. Then you'll be special. No, Satan is telling you that. Keep reading. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Meek and quiet. Go on. Which is in the sight of God of great price. Did we finish? No. Keep reading. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also... Stop. Now the Bible is going to talk you, give examples of the holy women, right? We're going to read a few in the, in the lesson. Holy women. Let's see, let's see some characteristics of the holy women. What did they do? Go on. Who trusted in God. They, oh, wait a minute. These holy women trusted in God and what? Adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So they were in subjection to their own husbands. And what else? Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Calling him what? Calling him Lord. Hmm. Calling the, her husband Lord. Yeah. Right? You know you have a virtuous, rare, greater than any jewel woman on the planet Earth. But you have men who will take advantage of that, and that's not right. Yeah. 
That's why it has to work in tandem. Virtuous woman, righteous man. She didn't call Abraham Lord for nothing. That's right. <laughs> what did God call Abraham? His friend. I'm not saying to, to, any, to women to call any man Lord. Are you out of your mind? Don't do that. You be calling some of these demons and devils lords. Because there's, I'm a, I'm a, sisters, I'm going to keep it real with you. Yeah. Me being a man. Yeah. There's a lot of rotten dudes out there. Yeah. I mean, rotten to the core. Yeah. And they will lie to you. That's why, what did I tell you in the lesson? Keep your, fall back. Keep your legs closed. Trust in the Lord. Yeah. Keep going. Are we finished? No. Keep reading. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. We finished, right? Amen. Let me, let me look at seven. Let's, let's read seven, because it works in tandem. Seven. Likewise, ye husbands. You husbands. What? Dwell with them according to knowledge. According to knowledge. Go on. Giving honor unto the wife. Giving honor to the wife. As unto the weaker vessel. The woman is the weaker vessel. That's what God said. Now, you know what? When I say that, you have some women, they understand that order and so what are they hearing coming out of my mouth? It's nothing but sweetness. But for some women, it's nothing but bitterness and vile. Because they, they have been turned over to Satan. Keep reading. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Heirs together. Together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered together so God will hear your prayers. Yeah. We finish. Amen. Deuteronomy 22. Let's go talk about some, the, the, the dress code. Deuteronomy 22. Because nowadays you go certain places. Again, at my job, there's an individual there. When I first started, when I, see, when I saw the individual... I'm looking at a man, but I'm uncertain because I'm, I'm, I'm uncertain because I, I, see, I see a biological male that's trying to be a woman. I, can, I see it. Nobody, of course, is going to talk about it because, of course, you can lose your job and all that. But I see a biological male. I see a, a being that God made a male. He made a male that's trying to become a woman. And then there's another individual, I see a female biologically that wants to play a male role. That's confusion. Normally when I, I see this brother right here, he walked in earlier, when he greeted me, that's some, that's some what's up brother, how you doing? That's a male. I knew right away. There's no, there's no doubt, there's no confusion. Sister Anna, when they came and picked me up at the airport, she stepped out of the car right away, gave her a hug. That's a fee She's a female. Right. There was no confusion. Right. God is not the author of confusion. Right. There's a satanic statue, a false god, showing Balfamet and has two sex or both sex organs. That's confusion. Everything that thus saith the Lord. Satan does the opposite. Deuteronomy 22, one verse, verse 5. Go ahead and read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now, okay, so of course you'll have some women say, well, there's women pants. Okay. What if I walked in here with a dress today? There's a man dress? You guys would look at me like I was crazy. What if I walked in here with lipstick and a wig? Oh, no. and, and I would say, happy Sabbath to everyone. <laughs> okay. Read it from the top again, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Why do you have some women that want to be, want to play the role of a man or you want to be a man? Why? And vice versa, man to the woman. Why? God made you who you are, whether it's your skin color, 
your nationality, the language you speak. That's who God made. OK, God, God doesn't make mistakes. There's other things going on with those individuals. Right. We can trace it. It has to be traced all the way back to the childhood. We're not going to go deep into that, though. That's not for today's lesson. Something happened. That people, most people, when they tell you things, they never tell you everything. They only tell you what they want you to hear. And I can discern it. And so when I talk to most people, they'll tell me stuff, we'll exchange information, but inside of my mind I say, they're not telling me everything. I think that's one of my gifts that God has given me. I can read people. It's discernment. Where are we? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What did God say? Why? For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. God said he hates it. Because he made male and female in the beginning. He didn't make male and male, female and female, vice versa, upside down, or however you want to say it. God is simple. Male and female. Male and female. That's how, so my question to a lot, to the LGBTQ community, how did you get here? How did you get here? Man and woman. Whether, you, whether you're transgender, you're bisexual, a transsexual, whatever, pansexual, how did you get here? A man and a woman. Right? Man and a woman. And again, I'm not targeting them because that lifestyle is sin. But if I was eating pork, that's sin. And so, so a lot of times when you see these discussions going back and forth, a lot of people in the LGBT community, they get, they get infuriated. And, and no, you're not listening. Because I, I'm not just targeting that or focused on that. I'm, if I was over here sleeping with five different women and I'm not married to them, that's sin. Yep. Sleeping with my, my neighbor's wife, that's sin. That's right. Keeping Christmas, sin. I have to repent from that. So if I have to repent from sleeping with all these different women, you have to repent from being homosexual. How am I offending you? I just offended myself. Where are we? Twenty-three. God says that's an abomination. Now watch this. Deuteronomy 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, this is what God said to the children of Israel, specifically the woman, the daughters of Zion. Deuteronomy 23 and 17, go ahead and read. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, uh -huh. nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Stop, let me go back to the top of it. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Well, most, I'm going to say most, many of the daughters of Israel who don't know that they're Israel are whores. They have whored themselves. And they have glorified it and made businesses out of it and have taught their daughters to be whores. So then you'll have these younger girls growing up being whores. This is real talk. God said, you shall not be a whore. You're supposed to be pure and not defiled. You're supposed to be a virgin before you get married. Because that man knows that no other man has had you. When Jesus returns, Jesus is merciful. He hasn't come back yet, correct? Right. He hasn't gathered us yet from all nations and brought us back into our inheritance. Nope. You know that land where, two, where those groups of people are fighting? The land that, that doesn't belong to neither one of them. It belongs to us. It's our land. The, when Christ comes back, he's going to settle the controversy of Zion. Who does the land belong to? We are descendants of Shem. That makes us Semitic. There's many Semitic nations. We're just the chosen seed. We're not Africans. We're not Hamites. There's nothing wrong with Ham. It's just who we are. 
Don't try to force me to be something I'm not to fit your narrative because you don't want to give up control of the earth. Christ is going to make you give it up. And if you refuse, you're going into slavery. And meaning chains on you. All you nations who disobey, you're going in chains. The ones that accept and graft in, you'll be treated just like Israel. That's fair. Nobody wants to talk about when we went into captivity. I'll just forget all of that. God doesn't forget. Your governors and your presidents, and I'm not going to name names, if you refuse whatever nation you come from, you going into captivity. Thou shalt not bring, did we read 18? No. Go ahead, go ahead and read. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. There shall be no whore, whore. prostitutes, street walkers, making money. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore. Go on. Or the price of a dog. A dog is a homosexual. According to the Bible, we can read about it in Revelation 15. Wow. So when you call in your homeboy dog, you might want to think twice. <laughs> Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or a, the price of a dog. Go on. Into the house of the Lord, uh -huh. thy God. Thy for, God. For any vow. For any vow. Why? For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Both, both of these are abomination to the Lord thy God. Now, I think, is it 1 Kings... We, we, let's do, we're going to take a detour really quick. I think it's 1 Kings with King Asa. I want, I want to speak on some. Go to 1 Kings 15, I think. I think it's 1 Kings chapter 15. This is not in the lesson. Detour. Hold your place there. 1 Kings 15. 1 Kings, is it? Let me see. I think it's. It is. 1 Kings 15. We're going to start at verse 9. 1 Kings 15, verse 9, and we're going to come back. Hey, brother, I like your shirt right here. You got the Assyrians on there. Those were the sons of Ham. Those were black people. But they're not you, Israel, because they had us in captivity. 1 Kings 15, we're going to start at verse 9. Let's see what King Asa did. In relation, relating to the home, to Sodomites. Now, King Asa, let's see. Let's read it. First Kings chapter 15, verse 9. Go ahead and read. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. Verse 10. And 41 years reigned he in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Absalom. So we're going to talk about, we're going we're to see an instance of mercy. Go on. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. No, right in the eyes of the mayor. In the eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the president. The eyes of the Lord. The United Nations. Of the Lord. Of the Lord, because the Lord runs it all. Yes. Keep reading. As did David his father. And what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Twelve. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land. Oh, stop. Now remember, it didn't say he killed the Sodomites. Because they were supposed to die for that. Mm -hmm. So that shows you another attribute of God. He could be merciful. He took the Sodomites out of the land. You're not going to do that in this land. Everybody understand that? When Christ returns, there's not going to be any more homosexuality. Whatever the issue is, Christ is going to remedy it. He's going to take care of it. It doesn't always have to be put to death. That's, his, that's the mercy. Didn't I say earlier Christ is merciful? Yeah. He put the Sodomites out of the land. You're not doing that act in this land. But are they putting them out of the land here in America? What about in Israel today? No. There's parades. Look it up on YouTube. How are you going to take my lesson down, but you won't take that down? Whoever took that lesson down, I'm going to see you again. <laughs> I want to have a discussion with you. Just say, hello, how are you? Why did you take my lesson down? Yeah. I, didn't, I wasn't violent, right? right? right. Where are we? So mm -hmm. Asa, he did that which was right in God's eyes, and he took the Sodomites out of the land. And he also tore down that idolatry, and he removed his mother from being queen. Because she had an idol. 
go back to Deuteronomy. Did we finish Deuteronomy? No, let me, let me read that. Read it again. 12 and 13. Go on. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. See that? It's not just about Sodomites. It's also the idolatry. Yep. Keep reading. And also, Mecca. Wait a minute. Honor your mother and father. Go on. His mother. His mother. Even her he removed from being queen. So God said in his word that you can't put anything before him, right. not even your own mother. And if she's committing sin, then you, who are you going to choose, your mother or me? God. God. Keep reading. Because she had made an idol in a grove. Uh-huh. And Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kidron. When Christ returns, there will be no more idolatry, no more images and statues. Because he's going to, make, he's going to anoint Israel as a nation to go out into the earth and destroy the Buddha statue. That means boots on the ground in Thailand, Singapore, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, India. Boots on the ground. Who's the boots? Israel. We're going to police the earth. Everybody's going to be keeping these commandments and statutes and judgments. If you don't come up for tabernacles, the Lord is going to starve you. I go to restaurants all the time. And you see all the people of different nationalities eating. So I sit back and watch and I said, you know what? I know what everybody has in common. Everybody has to eat. Yeah. Now I understand Zechariah chapter 14 and everybody's going to come up. Yeah. If we do it, everybody does it. What goes for Israel goes for the whole world. Yes, the Lord speaks all languages. You can't outsmart him. He speaks fish too. Where are we? Deuteronomy 22. Go to Deuteronomy. We finished 20, Deuteronomy 22. We finished Deuteronomy 23, 17, 18. Yep. Let's go to Deuteronomy 22. Pick it up at verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Go right into verse 13. Deuteronomy 22 and 13. Go ahead and read. This is the law concerning sexual conduct. Okay? Title of the lesson is The Virtuous Woman. Sisters, pay attention, whether here or online. This is what God dictates. Go ahead and read. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate Stop. her. Stop. If any man takes a wife and has sex with her. That, that's what going in unto her means. And hate her. Go on. And give occasions of speech against her. Okay. I don't want to be with her. I, I, what I thought about her beforehand is not how I feel afterwards. Go on. And bring up an evil name upon her uh -huh. and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. What is a maid? A virgin. A virgin. I, so this man sleeps with this woman and says, you know what? I don't want to be with her. because She lied to me. She's not a, she wasn't a virgin. This is what he's saying, whether it's true or not. Keep reading. Then shall the father of the damsel uh -huh. and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity into the elders of the city in the gate. Stop. What is the tokens of the damsel's virginity? Sheep. Blood on the sheep. Blood on the sheep. Yeah. Now, not to be graphic, but if she's a virgin, she still has a hymen. That's true. So if you break the hymen, there's blood. That's true. Fourth of the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elder of the city of the gate. That's order. The father, the father has to be there, though. What if the father's locked up in prison for 100 years? He ain't there. Then chaos ensues. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother, both parents, he didn't say one. What about in our, in our, our people? There's mainly, what, single parent households. So how is somebody going to take them to the elders of the city if there's no one there? Shall the father of the damsel and her mother take, bring the forth the tokens of her of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate? And what, 16? And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. Uh -huh. Remember what it said. The father said, I gave my daughter to this man. Right? 
Not, no, no, he, I think he's cute. Yeah, he'll be good for you, girl. Go on and get with him. The father is, you see how important the father is? The head. The number one threat to this society is a Israelite heterosexual male. Let me say that again. We're target number one. Israelite heterosexual male. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man, the wife, and he hated her. 17. And lo, he hath given occasion of speech against her. Okay. Saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. This is what the man is saying about the daughter. Go on. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. So they bring proof of the tokens of the virginity. Go on. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. 18. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise Stop. Him. So let's, let's look at the punishment for the man at 18. The elders of that city shall take that man. If he lied, if he lied, she was a virgin. He just didn't want to be with her. He lied. And the elders of that city shall take that man, chastise him. Keep reading. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver uh -huh. and give them unto the father of the damsel because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. Imagine that. The expectation of the daughters of Zion to remain virgins. You have brought an evil name. That means that that woman, everywhere she would go among, in the nation, everybody would look at her and go, they whisper, she's not a, she wasn't a virgin. What about now? They glorified you've been with 100 men because you a bad boss chick. You know, you, you're a bad boss chick. You brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. Go on. And she shall be his wife. You, she's going to be your wife. You didn't want to be with her, but guess what? Concerning the law, that's your wife. Keep reading. He may not put her away all his days. All his days. But, but look at the punishment on the man, right? That's the punishment we read. Keep reading. But if this thing be true. But if... What he said was true. She was not a virgin. Watch. Go and on. the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel. The cloth. There was nothing on the cloth. Correct? Let's see what happens to the woman. Then they shall bring her out. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. And the men of her city shall stone her with stones mm. that she die. The men of the city shall kill her. That's what the Bible just said. Let me do a quick check. How many of us believe in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Then they shall bring a damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away from among you. We have, as a nation, have never, ever, can even imagine that kind of order. But that's what's coming. That shucking and jiving foolishness is over when god said you're going to rule you're going to rule all that foolishness is gone both males and females you're not going to have a, a nation of fools ruling the earth did we finish 22 keep reading if a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband. So if a man is found lying with a married woman, go on. Then they shall both of them die. Both die. Not just the woman. Go on. Both the man that lay with the woman uh -huh. and the woman. Go on. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. That's another form of evil. Is that going on today? Yep. Wholesale. Wholesale. Everybody will be, be put to death. Get in line. 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an Stop. husband. Let's, let's define betrothed. What does betrothed mean? Give me another synonym. Engaged, Engaged or promised. That doesn't mean they, ha they have not la laid together. Right? So now you're behaving as if you're together. You're promised. She's promised to him. They haven't had sex. 
God sees them as a couple. In God's eyes. Did it say boyfriend, girlfriend? No, it did not. That's how serious it is to God. If a damsel that is a virgin, a virgin betrothed unto a husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, go on. Then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, uh -huh. and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. Why? Why stone them both? She was down with it. She was, she didn't, she, she was down with it. So kill them both. Then you shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city. You shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, why? Because she cried not. She didn't say anything. Just like who's, as Absalom, who's his sister? Tamar. What's her name? Tamar. Tamar. She said not to do this evil thing. But this one didn't cry. She was with it. Keep reading. Being in the city. And the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, uh -huh. so thou shalt put away evil from among you. Kill them both. 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field. So if a man finds a woman who's betrothed in the field, go on. And the man force her. He forces her. That's, what's another name for that? Rape. He rapes her. There's a lot of that going on nowadays. I'm going to give you an example I just learned the other day. Go on. And lie with her. Uh -huh. Then the man only that lay with her shall die. Go on. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. You guys see the, the, the difference? Yep. She was forced. In one situation, she, one of them was down with it. The other one was forced. Kill the man, do nothing to her. Keep reading. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So I, I have, I, I'm a social worker, and I had a, a, a veteran, I work with veterans, so one of the veterans of female I was working with the other day, I was helping her fill out a app, uh, housing application. And so she started sharing some stuff with me. She was in the military because she's a veteran. And she said that she was molested or raped when she was younger, and she was raped in the military by several people. And I've heard of common stories like that before, many times. So by this law, all of those individuals should have been put to death. There's not going to be any raping going on in Christ's kingdom. Mm -hmm. You will be put to death immediately. I don't. I, and then I. So I talked with her, and I told her, you know, I, I can't. Fa I can't uh, fathom in my mind, my mind, how a man could rape somebody or molest a child. I try to. I try to think. How does that work? What do I do? do how do I plan that out? Do I wait behind a building when the woman comes out, jump on? How do you do that? I don't get it because my mind doesn't operate like that. But you will surely be put to death. And if we had the law being implemented now, we would have a lot more harmony out in these streets and everywhere. Because Ecclesiastes says, because sentence, well, how does it go? Because the sentence is not executed speedily. The heart of the sons of men is set in them to do wickedness. Nothing's going to happen to me. I did it 12 times. I'm going to keep doing it. It's fun. Where are we? What verse? 27. Keep reading. For he found her in the field. He found her in the field. And the betrothed damsel cried. She cried. Go on. And there was none to save her. That's why she, she's not, she does not, she has not done anything worthy of death. She cried. She wasn't with it. Did we finish? 28. Keep going. If a man find a damsel... That is a virgin, which is not betrothed, uh -huh. and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found. 29. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father. That's 50, your wife. Go on. Fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Uh -huh. Because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Did we finish? And last one. Go on. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. His father's wife, right? Or, this, or it says, a man shall not take his father's wife, okay, nor discover his father's skirt. Now, let's go to Levit Leviticus 21. Title of the lesson is A Virtuous Woman. Leviticus 21. There's order even with the priesthood. Leviticus 21. 
Pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. Go on. But for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother, and for his father, and for his son, and for his daughter, and for his brother. So you have the sons of Aaron, a priest, right? None shall be defiled. So if, if, if someone died, say it was your friend or cousin, right? Someone you work with, you couldn't go to the funeral because you would be defiled. But there's exceptions. But if it's, if it's your mother, you could be defiled for your mother. You could be defiled for your father. These are the sons of Aaron, the priest. Your son, you can be defiled for him and a daughter, your daughter, and for his brother. These are the exceptions. Look at verse 3. Go on. And for his sister, a virgin. A what? A virgin. A virgin. That, na that word keeps coming up. A virgin. A virgin. He could be defiled for his sister, a virgin. Go on. That is nigh unto him, uh -huh. which hath had no husband, for her may he be defiled. Verse 4. But he, shall not be defi but he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. Keep reading. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. 6. They shall be holy unto their God, and not profane the name of their God, for the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. What about in, in relation to taking a wife? These are the priests, right? These are the sons of Aaron. Right. Keep reading. Verse 7. They shall not take a wife that is a whore. Stop. They shall not take a what? A wife that is a whore. They shall not take a whore to wife. The priest. Keep reading. Or profane. Uh-huh. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto God. Verse 8. Thou shalt sanctify him therefore, for he offereth the bread of thy God. Uh -huh. He shall be holy unto thee, for I am the Lord which sanctify you, am holy. 9. And Stop. the God. Before you read 9. Remember, we just read about the sons of Aaron. The requirements for being a priest, the sons of Aaron, right? Verse 9. And the daughter of any priest. If she profaned herself by playing the whore. Stop. So you have a daughter. She's the daughter of any priest, correct? Let's, let's read the penalty. You have a daughter of any priest. If she profaned herself by playing a whore, keep reading. She profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. She shall be what? Burnt with fire. That means set her on fire. You see the seriousness of this? Do we see why the world is clowning right now? You see people out here burning in heaps of fire. Everybody's going to straighten up. This is what the Bible says. He says, the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father, she shall be burnt with fire. That's in the Bible. How many of your Sunday pastors read that? None of them. Keep reading. And he that is the high priest among his brethren. So now there's even a greater requirement with the higher priest. High priest. Go ahead and read. Upon whose head the anointing oil was poured. Uh-huh. And that is consecrated to put on the garments shall not uncover his head nor rend his clothes. Go on. Neither shall he go into any dead body nor defile himself for his father or for his so mother. So no, the high priest can't de even defile himself for his mother or father. The sons of Aaron could do it, those priests, right? But this is the high priest. Was Moses a high priest? Yeah. No, he wasn't. I'm going to prove it to you right now. Keep reading. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God. So we're reading about the high priest. Keep reading. For the crown of the, of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. Keep reading. And he shall take a wife in her virginity. No, a wife, that's a whore. In her virginity. Her virginity, go on. A widow. Widow. Or a divorced woman. Divorced woman. Or profane. Profane. Or an harlot. Harlot. These shall he not take. Go on. But he shall take a virgin of his own people to Stop. wife. Stop. He shall take a virgin of his own people. Is Moses, was Moses a high priest? No. Why not? He huh? He married an Ethiopian woman. They look alike. 
different nation. One was Ham, the other one was Shem. That's the high, so the high priest can't marry outside of the nation. Was Aaron a high priest? Yeah. Yes, he was. Moses was not a high priest. That's, he married an Ethiopian woman. She was Cush, Ham. Keep reading. Neither shall he profane his seed among his people. Go on. For I, the Lord, do sanctify him. We finish? Go down to verse 24. Skip down to verse 24. Go ahead and read. And Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons and unto all the children of and Israel. To all the children of Israel. Proverbs 7. We're almost there. Proverbs chapter 7. Virtuous woman. Proverbs 7. What we're about to read, this is not a virtuous woman. And this is the majority of what's going on nowadays. Proverbs 7. But remember, King Lemuel's mother told him not to give his strength to women. Proverbs chapter 7. Pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead and read. Well, let's see. Let me start. Before, let me see. Start at verse 1. 7 and 1. Proverbs 7 and 1. Go ahead and read. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. The commandments are there for your protection from everything. That's, that's wicked. Right? Keep reading. Bind them upon thy fingers. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Stop. What's a strange woman? It could be two things. Outside of Israel, physically stra a stranger. But then a woman of your nation can also be a stranger. If we're in the truth and she's keeping Christmas, she's strange to the covenant. She's strange. Now I'm on the spiritual tip. She's physically of your nation, but she's spiritually strange to you. Keeping the commandments, it keeps you from the strange woman. Keep reading. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. Six. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement uh -huh. and beheld among the simple ones. Stop. A simp. What is a simp? That's a man that's just easily led anywhere by a woman. You are a simp. You're weak. You have given your strength over to the woman. It says, for at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld. So this woman is looking through her window. And let me see if I can identify the simps out here. It's a whole bunch of them. Beheld the simple ones. Go on. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Eight. Passing through the street near her corner. This is, this, these are the simps passing through the street corner. Go on. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Isn't that where most of that stuff takes place? behind closed doors and then at night on the streets and motel. Wait a minute. <laughs> Snap out of it. <laughs> that was just for humor. <laughs> yeah. Passing through the street near her corner, he went to the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. Verse 10. And behold, there met him a woman. A woman. Is she modestly dressed? Keep going. With the attire of a harlot. The attire of a harlot. It means everything is hanging out. Keep reading. And subtle of heart. Very subtle and slick. Keep reading. She is loud and stubborn. Wait a minute. The virtuous woman opens her mouth with wisdom. This woman is loud and stubborn. That sounds familiar. She's loud and stubborn. Keep reading. Her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the street. She's in the street. What do they call that, 304? I'm just learning this stuff. I mean, a 30, what, is a, what is a 304? Oh, okay. Now she is without, now in the streets, and life and wait. She's at every corner. One, two, three in the morning. Keep reading. So she caught him. She caught this simp. Go on. And kissed him. Uh-huh. 
and with an impudent face said unto him, Stop. Wait a minute. She kissed him. What was he supposed to do? What did Joseph do? Ran. He ran. Track star. Track star. Yeah. Joseph took off. And he was still punished for something he did not do, right? Yeah. But the Bible says, but the Lord was still with Joseph. Yeah. That's learning something on your way to learn. So when you're in a situation, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, in your daily life, and, you, and something comes upon you, and you know within your mind you didn't do it, and you're still punished for it, think of Joseph. The Lord is, is still, can still be with you. But if you don't know the word, that would that would go right over your head like a bullet. Mm -hmm. She caught him and kissed him and with an imputed face said unto him, what did she say? I have peace offerings with me. Uh -huh. This day have I paid my vow. Fifteen. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face and I have found thee. This is not a virtuous woman. I have found thee because this woman we're going to we're going to read. Well, we'll, we'll read into it. Keep going. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry uh -huh. and carved works with fine linen of Egypt. So basically perfume. She looks good. She's dressing provocatively. Everything's flowers. She's, everything smells. It's just like today. Those things are there to entice you. Keep reading. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. 18. Come, let us take our fill of love until this morning. Go on. Let us solace ourselves with love. 18 says, come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. She's doing this because of what? Keep reading. For the good man is not at Stop. home. Who's the good man? Her husband. Her husband is not at home. Let's see how long he's been gone. Go ahead and read. He has gone on a long oh, journey. Oh, a long journey. Do you not think that that's not happening today? It's still happening at this very moment. Yeah. People like to think that this is kind of fairy tale. I do believe the Bible, but not literally. There's a scripture in here that talks about when Christ came down among the children of Israel, he, he didn't want to come into the camp. Why not? Because there were feces everywhere. I'm not walking amongst that stuff. Go without the camp. Do that out there. This is a real book. Who would, if, if this was fairy tale, who would write something like that? <laughs> Where are we? 20. Keep reading. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the appointed day. So my husband is gone. I'm tired of him. His breath stinks. He's fat. He's out of shape. He smokes cigarettes. And the only reason why I'm with him because he still makes decent money. But he's gone on a long journey, and now I can get with you. Because you're a simp. And I'm a Jezebel. Because her father is Satan. Keep reading which her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. There's many simps out there. Yep. Whether you're a doctor, lawyer, engineer, athlete, musician, common person, teacher, PE coach. You know how many times I, I turn on the news, I, I look on YouTube, and you see PE coaches being arrested for molestation rape. You see judges, lawyers, police officers, you, you name it doing videotaping women, having child pornography on their, on their computers. But wait a minute, but you'll throw me in jail because I ran a red light. But I know where I've been in my life. If you check my background, I have nothing in it. Drugs, nothing. You try to judge me, and you got all these files full of child pornography? The Lord is watching it all. The virtuous woman. Keep reading. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Go on. He goeth after her straightway. Reverse, sorry, okay. 22. 22, go on. As so he doesn't hesitate. I'm going to jump on this. Right. Keep going. As an ox goeth to the slaughter, uh -huh. or as a fool to the correction of the stock. 23. Till a dart strike through his liver. Uh-huh. 
as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not that is, it is for his life. It is for his life, meaning even life eternal. Right? You can, you can die two times. Right. Keep reading. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, uh -huh. and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not, not, let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Wait a minute. Many wounded? Many men. It's not just one or two. Many. Why? Because they've given over their strength to women. No man, righteous man, would allow what's between a woman's legs run and rule you. And a righteous woman wouldn't even think that way anyway. As a man, you're supposed to rise above that. Because God gave you the dominion. And if you do not, you are a simp. You're a simpleton. You're weak. You could be the strongest man physically on the earth, but you're weak. Right? We finished that? Keep reading. Yea, many strong men have been slain wait, wait, wait. by her. No, many weak men. Many strong men. Strong men have been slain by that whore. Mm -hmm. Go on. Her house is the way to hell. Hell. Going down to the chambers of death. Chambers of death. We finish? Yep. 2 Samuel 13. Second Samuel 13. We have nowhere to go, right? This is the Sabbath, and it's a lot of sun out there. 2 Samuel 13. Second Samuel chapter 13. When you get there, go ahead and read verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Abnon, the son of David, loved her. Verse 2. And Abnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. She was a what? She was a virgin. She was a what? A virgin. A virgin. Keep going. And Abnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Why would you even be thinking about your sister in that way anyway? That's a, that, would, that would be strike one for me. Wait a minute. Isn't that my sister? He was so vexed. I can see where a man, you know, could be in, in that kind of love for a woman that's not your sister. I get, understand that. But you still have to control yourself as a man. Because you do have some women out there. I didn't say all. You have some women out there that will take that. When they recognize you're a simp, they'll run you, run you dry. And usually women that are like that, they can tell. That's when they look at me. They, no, oh, no, oh, no, leave, stay away from him. Just the look on his face, uh-uh, leave him alone. <laughs> Keep reading. But Abnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. Mm-hmm the son of Shemaiah, David's brother. Go on. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Verse, very subtle and slick. Verse 4. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Ammon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Verse 5. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. Six. So Ammon lay down and made her himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Ammon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come and make me a cup of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Go on. Then David sent home to Tamar saying, go now to thy brother Ammon's house and dress him meat. Stop. Did it, have we read anywhere where it said Ammar, uh, Tamar started complaining nope. about making a meal? Nope. Let him make his own food. <laughs> Keep reading. So Tamar went to her brother Ammon's house, and he was laid down, 
and she took flour and kneaded it. So remember, the virtuous woman knows how to do what? Work with her hands. Exactly. She, so he was laid down, and she took flour and kneaded it. Go on. And made cakes uh, in his sight. Go on. And did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Ammon said, Have out of all men from me, have out all men from me. And they went out, every man from him. And Ammon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat unto the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber of Ammon, her brother. Eleven. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. Didn't we read that in Deuteronomy? Mm -hmm. He took hold of her. <laughs> right? Keep reading. And she answered him, Nay, my brother. Wait a minute. Virtuous woman. Virgin. What was, was she with it? No. She said, nay, my brother. Right? Keep reading. Do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Read, read that again. And, Am, and, and Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of mine hand. Tamar took the cakes which he had made, and brought them in the chamber to Amnon her brother. Verse 11, read 11 again. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her. He took hold of her and? And said unto her, come lie with me, my sister. Let's see her response. And she, this, this, will be the, this, will, this will determine the difference between some, a woman who's virtuous right. and a woman that's not. That's right. Let's see what she, how she responded. Go on. And she answered him, nay, my brother, do not force do me. Do not force me. This is a form of rape. Right. Keep reading. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Wait a minute. No such thing ought to be done in Israel. This, this woman knew the law. How many women do you think you would hear say, say that nowadays? No such thing should be done whatever city you're from. A lot of women would just be down with it. Not all. No such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not this folly. This is a virtuous woman. Keep reading. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? L and listen, as, listen to what she said. This would be shameful. And if this happens, where would this shame go? Everybody would hear about it and they would mock me. This is shameful. To nowadays, it's honored. What do they call it? Body count? You got people doing videos, interviewing females. How many, how many guys have you been with? 23. Eight. 30 plus. But this virgin said this would be shameful. Keep reading. And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. She would be shameful and he would be a fool. Nothing good can come out of that. Keep reading. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. If you want me, talk to the king, and he will grant it. But don't do this. That's a wise woman. That, that's how the daughters of Zion were supposed to be. Keep reading. Howbeit, he would not hearken unto her voice, but because he was... Stronger than she. Uh-huh. Forced her. He raped her. And lay with her. He should have been put to death on the spot, even though Amnon killed him later. Mm -hmm. He should have been killed right away. Keep reading. Then Amnon, Amnon. Wait a minute. I thought he, he was so in, much in love with her, he was vexed. Mm -hmm. But read verse 15. Then Am, Amnon hated her exceedingly. Hated her. How do you go from loving her to hating her? Keep reading. So that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. Uh huh. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. Imagine that. Just kicked her out. Get out of here. Keep reading. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil is sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. So basically what she's saying is, you sending me out of here is worse than you lying with me or raping me. Keep reading. But he would not hearken unto her. 17. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. Even bolt the door. 
Keep reading. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins appareled. Virgins appareled, right? There's that word virgins again. Virgin, virgin. Keep reading. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. Let's see what else did Tamar do. Go on, 19. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. Went on crying. Most women nowadays would be like, oh, oh well. And do the same thing the next week. Or not her, meaning this is how she reacted to that, right? Reaction. reaction. But a lot of women today, you know, well, you know, oh, well, I'm going to be with somebody next week anyway. You see the difference what's going, of what's going on? The mentality. Keep reading. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother's Absalom's house. Keep reading. But when King David heard all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister or to he mar. had raped his sister. And by the law, he should have been put to death. Yes. Stone him with stones, to put evil away from among you. Genesis 24. She still, in that, in that scenario, would she have still been considered a virtuous woman? Yes, yeah. she would have, because she was not with that, but she, and, and, uh, she was raped, right? And she saw it as, as evil. So she st you have circumstances where, in a situation like that, that woman is still considered virtuous. Genesis 24. What's that brother's name right there? Genesis chapter 24. Genesis 24, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. 24 and 1. 24 and 1. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand on, under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, did he make an oath? Yeah. That's an oath. Yeah. He swear. Okay, go on. And Swore. The, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto, thy, unto a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. So basically, Abraham said to his servant, I want you to go back and find a wife from among our people. Right. Do not find a Canaanite woman for my son. Or a Hamite. This was an Af what we call an African woman. She was a Canaanite. Okay? Go back to, keep reading, verse 4. But thou shalt go unto my country. To our country. Yes. Go on. To my kindred. Uh -huh. And take a wife unto my son Isaac. What's, what, what, what country is that? What country was, was Abraham referring to? Huh? Ur. Ur. Ur of the Chaldees. Where is Ur today? Babylon. Or, uh, Iraq. Southern Iraq. This is where Abraham was, was born. That's the, that's the land of his nativity. It wasn't Africa. Although in that time, the people in Mesopotamia, Africa, they were all black. Ham and Shem. So why do we refer to ourselves as African American? We could call ourselves Chaldeans. Ur, Urites. Abraham was from Ur of the Chaldees. Okay, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Keep reading. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman would not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? So he's basically saying, what if the woman doesn't want to follow me back to the land of Canaan? Right? Go ahead and read. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. So in other words... To the servant, you go get the woman and bring her to the land of Canaan. But not Isaac going back to the kindred, their land of the kindred, right? Of the Ur of the Chaldee. At verse 6, it says, And Abraham said unto him, 
beware that thou, thou, that, thou, it says, that thou bring not my son thither again. Back to Ur of the Chaldees. Don't bring him there. Verse 7. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Which land? What land is that? What land is that? Israel. The land of Canaan. Right. And which seed? The children of Israel. Who was promised that land? It wasn't the Edomites. It wasn't the Ishmaelites. It was the children of Israel. It said, The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me, that thou swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And he shall, okay, go on, and he shall what? He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. Verse 8. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. Keep going. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master, and swear to him concerning this matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose. And, and went where? And went to Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, southern Iraq. Go on. Unto the city of Nahor. Eleven. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that the women go out to draw water. Verse 12. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and shew kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. So the servant is praying and asking the Lord to show him signs. Show him a sign. That's, do you not think that applies to this day? The sisters are praying for a husband. You have to ask the Lord to show you a sign. Okay? What do I need to see? Sometimes the Lord will have you wait three years, five years. Okay? It says, let me go back. It said at verse 12, and he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham. So the, the servant is petitioning God. I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show me kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. So when I say, let down thy pitcher, go on. I pray thee uh -huh. that I may drink, and she shall say, drink. She shall it, say, drink. Go on. And this I will, is a sign. Go on. And I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shewed kindness unto my master. So that's a blueprint, sisters. That's, a, that's an example prayer if you're looking for a husband. Did it say anywhere to go to the club? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Because we're about to read characteristics of this, this woman. Okay, keep reading. Verse 15. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Before he, had done been, before he had done speaking. Even before he finished speaking. Go on. That behold, Rebekah came out. Who came out? Rebekah. Rebekah came out. Go on. Who was born to Bethuel, son of Melchah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. Let's read about Rebekah. Let's see what kind of woman Rebekah was. Go on. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. What does very fair mean? Beautiful. She was beautiful. That's a plus. Keep reading. A virgin. A what? A virgin. A what? A virgin. A virgin. No man has ever been with her. Keep reading. Neither had any man known her. Uh-huh. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And Drink she, my what? Drink, my lord. Drink my what? My lord. My lord. Keep reading. And she hasted. And lit down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. 19. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have, drunk, until they have done drinking. So in, any, in anywhere that we've been reading, did we read anywhere that it said Rebecca complained? No. She, she, tried, to, she tried to be contentious with, with the servant. Yeah. Well, why do I have to do that? What, what are you going to do for me? 
she was very obedient and compliant. A man does not want to come home to another man. A man does not want to come, a woman, a woman doesn't want to come home to, to contention. A man doesn't want to come home to contention. I told you, if that woman is virtuous, and I'm not saying playing virtuous, she is a virtuous woman. That's who she is. You're going to want to run home every day from work. Keep reading. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher in the throw and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, held his peace to with whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. So, it, sisters, you praying to the Lord for a husband, you have to wait on the Lord. The Bible says wait on the Lord. And then in that waiting, you have to conduct yourself in a godly manner. Everybody understand that? Oftentimes, and I've seen it many times, you have a sister that'll jump the gun. Now you, now you got into a situation you wish you never opened that door. Because you didn't want to wait. That and many other things. Listening to her so-called friends and her mother and other females. Instead of praying to the Lord. Did it say anywhere that Rebecca cons consulted or... or uh, like when it, when it was describing Rebecca, okay, did, did it read, can we read anywhere where it says she ran off to her mother or her friends or any, none of that. She was obedient. Brothers, these are the things you look for if you're looking for a wife. Keep reading. She said, moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge. Isn't that, isn't that describing the virtuous woman? That we read in Proverbs 31? Keep reading. And the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. Okay, we finished that. Skip down to verse 40. Go ahead and read. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son and my kindred and of my father's household. 42. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin come forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, and I would also draw for your, thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's who son. Who the Lord, you, in other words, brothers, this is what you want. You want to, the Lord to appoint right. a wife for you. Yes. It said, it says, 43, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin, this is what the servant was looking for. When a virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. This is what I'm looking for. And she say to me, both drink, thou, both, both drink thou, and I will also draw for your camels. Let the same be this woman who the Lord had appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking, keep going. In my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her, her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her, and she said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, the whore's son, whom Michal bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelet, bracelets upon her hands. 48. And I bowed down myself. I bowed down my head and worshiped the Lord 
And bless the Lord God of my master Abraham. The Lord God of my master Abraham. Why? Which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. The God of Abraham led him in the right way. It didn't say his friends, his co-workers, his, his brother, his this, his that. He says God led him in the right way. Okay, we finished that. Skip down to 61. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah and went, and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well, Lohe Roi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servants told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Luke chapter 1. That was an example of a virtuous woman, Rebecca. Luke 1. Luke chapter 1. You're going to start, it says that on the lesson, it says, at, at start at verse 1, but I want you to start at verse 5. Luke, Luke, uh, Luke chapter 1, start at verse 5. Go ahead and read. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Okay, so it says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, his wife, and her name was Elizabeth. Go ahead. And they were both righteous before God. They were both righteous before God. Yeah. What made them righteous? Go ahead. Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Keep reading. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from, the mother's womb, from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit of the pow and power of Elias and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering him, answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to shew thee these glad tidings. And behold, Thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration in ministry ministration were accomplished, he departed to his ho own house. And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus have the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein 
he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Okay, go right into 20, uh, 26. Keep reading. And in the sixth So that was, that was John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, right? She walked in all the uh, commandments. Right? She was bo they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. 26. In the sixth month. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Uh, okay. 27. To a virgin espoused. To espoused, a what? To a virgin There's that word virgin again. To a virgin what? Go on. Espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David to the virgin's, and the virgin's name was Mary. Okay. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art the highly flavored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. So the Bible is saying the angel came in unto, unto Mary. And said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Yeah. Mary is highly favored. Yeah. It didn't say every woman on the planet. No. Mary was highly favored. Mary. It also says she was a virgin. Yeah. Okay, keep reading. 29. And the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Go on. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast fav found favor with God. Mary had found favor with who? With God. With God. Go on. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Uh -huh. And the angel answered and said unto her, That was just a common thing among women in that time. Like, I, is, what did she say? She said, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Right. That was like the, that was the expectation. Right. Nowadays, how many women can say, out there, can say <laughs> that? It's, what, what is it, what, out there, it's more like, I know many men. Right, yeah. Mary is like, I know not a man. I know no man. Right. Yeah. Keep reading. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. A lot of these Israelite groups don't believe that. They believe that, that Mary had sex with an earthly man to conceive. Well, did we just read that? No, we did. It says, the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Right. Keep reading. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. So a lot of these Israelite groups don't believe that the Holy Ghost came upon Mary and overshadowed her, right? But... Read the next verse. This is why that is possible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Read it again. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. I, I've never heard any of those Israelite groups read that verse. Okay. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Okay? Did we finish that? 38. Keep reading. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Okay, we're going to skip. We're going to skip because of the time. We're going to skip Judges. You guys can read that on your own. You're going to skip uh, the, uh, 17 and 18. And we're going to go right into Proverbs. 17 and 18. So go, go to Proverbs 21. Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21, one verse, verse 14. Proverbs 21 and 14. Is that it? Is that the one I want? Wait, hold on. I don't think that's the one I want. Righteous. We can do this one. I'm sorry. Let's go to Proverbs 21 and 9. That's a typo. 21 and 9. I already have that in there. Okay, just re yeah, read, read Proverbs 21 and 9. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Read that again. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop 
than with a brawling woman in a wide house. This is not a virtuous woman. <laughs> if, 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 if it's going to cause a man to want to dwell in the corner of his housetop, then, then that's not, that would be considered a virtuous woman. Go to Proverbs 27, and we'll have one more after that. Proverbs 27 and 15. Proverbs 27 and 15. This is not a virtuous woman. Go ahead and read. A continual dropping in a very raining day in a contentious woman or a light. Read that one more time. A continual dropping in a very rainy day uh -huh. in a contentious woman or a light. And let's go to the last place, Proverbs 29. <coughs> Is it 29? Hold on. Okay, that's another typo. I'm sorry. Proverbs, it's 31. I'm sorry. Proverbs 31. We're gonna, we're gonna re we read this already earlier in the lesson. Proverbs 31. And 29, read 29, 30, and 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Start at verse 29. Go ahead and read. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Go on. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Okay, and that, the title of the lesson is The Virtuous Woman, and I hope you got... Understanding in Jesus' name.